Hello guys, welcome back to A7 Engineering YouTube channel. Please subscribe our channel for daily A7 Engineering videos. In today's lecture, we are going to discuss the basics of structural design. So here are the some basics from the plan of a structure till to the design and detailing of the reinforcement and in a structure. So the first step in the design and the structure design is the structural plan. This this is the first step and we decide this step with the with the architecture that how we can build our structure element. So this is the structure plan for any kind of building or structure you want to design. So the next step comes with the type of a structure. Type of a structure. It means now which kind of structure you want to build. Either you want to build it with a concrete only. I mean the reinforced concrete structure or you want to build the structure with a steel just like completely made with steel structure or it is a kind of a wood structure so it may be another kind of a structure so the second step is to decide about the type of a structure the third one is is the assume member size or assuming a member size now after decide after deciding that we want to for example we want to design or uh, take the structure which is made up of the rc concrete or the reinforced concrete now the next step will to decide the member size for example it includes that what would be the size of the beam what would be the size of the column so this comes under the design category column for example and we have to know we have to design or assume our member here for example the beam dimensions we have to take it uh, and the first step we have to assume these dimensions for example the width of the beam or the depth of the beam and according to this we have to design our member so the third step includes the assuming the member size and designing it accordingly it also includes the column we have to take certain dimension of the column with the breadth and the depth of the column and accordingly applying the loads on these and then later on to provide the reinforcement for the structure members but the first steps are we can see the third step here in the design comes out to be the assuming the member size the fourth one comes out to be the applying loads on these structure members applying loads now what does it mean by load because we know that the structure member will have self weight or we can say it will have dead load it will also carry some live load depends on how you want to design for example there are different standards which provide the different loads for your building element so you can also put the snow load on your building element depending on where is your building for example if it's in snowy region then you have to consider the snow load and if it's a very tall building more than 80 floors or something like this then you have to also consider the wind load acting on this building so we have different kinds of load and we should apply these loads on our building and also we have to combine these loads or we can say the combination of loads should be applied to the structure member combination of loads there are different combination of loads in different codes for example according to the american it states that 1.d dead load plus 1.6 live load according to the europe which i remember it's 1.35 dead load plus 1.5 live load you have to multiply it with a factor in order to increase the load demand on the structure member so the fourth step is applying the load on your structure now coming with the fifth step the fifth step is about the structure analysis now after applying the loads on the member you can do analysis of these structure members so you have beam you, you took the assumption in a dimension of the beam and then you applied the load on the beams and then you have to do the structure analysis structure analysis now includes the shear analysis how much is the shear forces acting on your beam what about the bending moment the maximum bending moment coming on your beam structure on your beam element also for torsion stresses acting on your beam there are different various analysis that we should carry out in the structure analysis 
So after getting all of these analysis, shear, bending moment or torsion for example, then we are going to structural design. The next step will be the structural design. In this step, we have to design our beam element and it includes the providing the reinforcement area. So it is related to the area of the reinforcement. That how much area is to be provided for your structure member in order to take the load. You apply the load on your members here and then you do analysis that how much shear force or bending moment are coming and then you according to the bending moments coming on the beam or shear forces you provide the design for these members and from the design you took the area of the reinforcement that how much area of the reinforcement should be provided in order to take the applied load. So six is the structural analysis, structural design. Now the seventh step. Seventh step comes with the checking for allowable limits. After your design is satisfied, for example, the area of reinforcement you provide satisfied the load, then you have to check the check for allowable limits. And this is mostly for serviceability analysis, or we can say. For example head deformation or deflection and it should be okay otherwise you have to repeat the whole steps so the seventh one is for the serviceability analysis and we have to check for allowable limits it means that there are different codes which provide different limits for your deflection of the members for the beams columns for example if I want to show it here so this is my beam with the length of L so we have to find out its maximum deflection. For example, it deflects like this and this is a maximum deflection here, delta maximum. So we have to verify this maximum this maximum deflection of the beam and it should not be less, it should not be greater than the maximum deflection provided by different codes. So this is comes under the category of the serviceability. So we should consider this serviceability analysis also in our design. And this is the last step. Check for the allowable limits. Either it is greater than the one which provided by code or less. If it is greater, then you must have to redesign the whole steps. For example, from assuming the beam and then applying the load, structure analysis and then structural design again. And then again, checking for the allowable limits. So if it is not satisfied, then you have to go again up and again down until it satisfies the serviceability analysis criteria. So hope you guys understand and the last step of course the last step is missing here so I can write it here number eight step is about the detailing of the reinforced members detailing and this increase the ductility of your structure members ductility so by detailing means that the reinforcement should be provided in certain region in order to increase the ductility of the structure members. For example, if this is my, for example, if this is my beam, so, and this is also going in this both direction, so, if this is a load acting on the beam, and there is a deformation or the bending stresses like in this way, and then again like in this way, so we have maximum bending moment in this mid region, maximum bending moment, positive bending moment. So we cannot provide overlapping of the bars here at those region, also at those region. So we can only overlap the bars here at the support region. Also for columns, there are different detailing rules which we should consider in our structure members in order to increase the ductility of the member and also to do it according to the codes. So this is the last step in detailing. Hope you guys understood the different steps that we should take care of in order to design our structure members. And please don't forget to subscribe our channel for daily seven engineering videos.